And uh, I recall that Pittsburgh, oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, Pittsburgh had a really uh, popular uh, alternative rock station back in, uh, in in the 90s. I don't know if it's still around there or not, but uh, uh, I wonder. So what was the genre of music that your dad was playing? He was playing classic rock. So I, I, I really grew up listening to classic rock from him. Um, and then my mom, my, I mean, my mom loved it too. She would always, she was one of the groupies. She went to his shows. She loved it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's awesome. <laughs> So we open the show today with um, we open the show today with a song of yours uh, from a little while ago uh, called Wedding Bells, mm-hmm. and uh, you've had a, yes. you've had this album out for a while, and I know you're you're working on uh, the next here. Uh, but what was some of the inspiration mm-hmm. that went into Wedding Bells? This I'm not kidding you. This song is literally words that were lifted from my high school diary. Oh my! That's God. that's really the best way to put it. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> Oh my it God! Diaries. My high school diary. Oh yes, yes. Do, do people still do <laughs> diaries? Oh, I totally did. I had notebooks all over the house. I'm always writing something or little tiny scraps of paper all through my purse that just kind of become notes that I stick in one notebook and they're glued and pasted in. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the, I wonder, though, about diaries like, uh, you know, you always used to hear about diaries of famous people. And, and mm-hmm. today I, I feel that more people are putting more of what they typically would have put into a diary out on the Internet in blogs or Facebook posts or Snapchat uh, pictures or whatever it yeah. is. Do you think that people are still uh, putting together diaries in the same way that we, we did growing up? Oh, gosh, I would I would hope so. I I really don't know. I would hope so. But. I mean, there's something so special about that, having all of your thoughts and they're, they're only yours. And you hide that diary and nobody's allowed to look in it. <laughs> Until... I mean, I'll never, I'll never forget the very first thing I ever did when I got a new journal or, or a notebook or a diary was on the very first page. I wrote my name in big letters and I'd write keep out. <laughs> yeah, stay, stay out. Not welcome here. Yeah. Oh you know, my gosh! Yeah, this is this is mine. This is where I can write whatever I want. <laughs> now, you said that I, I believe you said you had a brother. Is that right? Yes, I do. I have a little brother. And was there always a, a fear of your little brother discovering this diary of yours that uh, obviously is a wealth <laughs> of uh, musical inspiration? <laughs> really not. I mean, my brother, we grew up best friends. I think it helped that where we grew up, there were, there were, there were two other houses and there were no kids around us. So if we got mad at each other, we had no one to play with. You know what I mean? And we're really close in age. So we grew up best friends. I, I mean... I almost kind of wanted him to see some of the songs that I wrote to be like, Hey, Tina, what do you think of this one? What uh-huh. do you think of this line? You know what I mean? So there was never really a fear of that, but I guess I'm, I'm lucky because I've seen some of my friends and their siblings and I'm like, Oh gosh, <laughs> how in the world have you survived? <laughs> I know, right? I'm one of six. Yeah. I'm one of six. So it's a, uh, you know, it's a miracle oh, that we all, uh, <laughs> we all graduated out of the house and, uh, and, and all, uh, you know, <laughs> nobody's in jail. So that's good. <laughs> that is always a plus. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. So tell me about uh, yes. some of the, the, the work that you're doing right now, uh, the music that you're putting together, uh, and uh, some of the upcoming shows that you were just sharing with me. Well, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm really excited about the things that, uh, that Joe Wilpus and I have worked on together. Um, our, our newest song, Without Me, is that's the, our current single right now. I love it. I love singing it. It's... Um, People, people seem to really, really like it, too, when I sing it. They say that it just makes them feel good about a bad situation. A lot of times people say that. Um, the, the, my next show coming up is Friday, March 3rd. I totally forgot what day of the week it was for a second. <laughs> Friday, March 3rd. <laughs> there goes my brain again. <laughs> Friday, March 3rd at a place called the Friday Faith Cafe in Washington. I've actually never sang there before. I'm mm-hmm. really, really excited. They, have, they host a concert only one Friday every month. And I was really, really excited to be included in their in their lineup this year. Um, but it's total free admission, free refreshments. Nice, pretty awesome. I'm excited yeah, free about Free food it. always brings yeah. out people. I uh, I know Joe Joe Volpus uh, was I'm... was good at bringing out free uh, free pizza. Uh, yes. <laughs> the Webster <laughs> Hall performance. I love that. I think I think that in almost every single post leading up to to Webster Hall that I had put, I I always included there's free pizza because I pizza. think that. I was personally really excited about the free pizza. So I'm like, hey, guys, listen, there's free food and music. That's like the definition of an awesome night. Exactly. <laughs> that is the definition of an awesome night. And and yes. so Washington, PA, that's right outside of Pittsburgh. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know the logistics exactly, but it's 
somewhere right outside of Pittsburgh. <laughs> so somewhere right outside of Pittsburgh on Friday, March 3rd, uh, there in Washington, yes. PA. Now, is does does Washington, PA inherit the same reputation about drivers uh, <laughs> that Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania does, uh, where drivers in Pittsburgh are known as the worst road rage driving uh, people uh, that exist in the United oh my States? Oh, I, I can't even, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I feel like it would be just anywhere around Pittsburgh, but I'm like, oh my gosh, this is kind of, this is sad. We're just, I guess we're just angry people. I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't I've know never experienced is. an angry Pittsburgher though. Uh, and, and when I, when I heard this thing about this road rage, it's obvious then that the reason that Pittsburgh people must be so nice <laughs> is that they get it all out on the road. Yeah. They get all their anger out on the road. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm get, hearing, we, we take care of it all. Then we'll, we get to our destination and we're like, oh, how are you? It's so nice to see you today. <laughs> that's right. This is how we, this is Maybe why we're so our pleasant. Maybe gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's what it is. Now, I, I feel like you guys are getting, um... Uh, a demerit here or put into the corner with a dunce cap yeah. on, though, because, you know, some of the most uh, technologically advanced companies uh, that are out there are, put, are producing um, self-driving cars now. And Uber, uh, I believe, was just known oh for gosh. producing self-driving cars in Pittsburgh as a test. Is this some, like, um, judgment oh on, on the drivers uh, that they're so bad and that there's so much road rage that we have to take their driver's licenses away from them and <laughs> replace them with self-driving cars? I don't know. That's freaky. That I mean, I I think that maybe a self-driving car is actually going to drive better than me. I have a pretty bad driving reputation. <laughs> maybe I need one of these self-driving cars just to ensure that I'm safe. I don't know. <laughs> what is going to happen to the to the to the reputation of people though in Pittsburgh as as being such nice people, such passionate people though? If their their <laughs> their one outlet is taken away with from them and replaced by self-driving cars. Oh gosh. I don't know. I think maybe it's just time to like buy a bunch of helmets and get uh, ready for like anarchy or something. <laughs> well, I think what we need to do <laughs> is uh, is buy everybody in Pittsburgh that gets replaced uh, by a self driving car. Uh, we should get them all diaries <laughs> and uh, and and have them yes. uh, do diaries and give them to your yes. brother. Yes, <laughs> I think that we are onto something here. It's brilliant. We're gonna teach. We're gonna we're gonna get everybody back to that creative outlet of writing down your feelings, not not posting your feelings or <laughs> road raging your feelings. <laughs> diarize your feelings. This is right songs. Is, is diarize <laughs> yes. can diarize is that is that a verb? We can make it a verb. I don't see why not. I think that, I like it. Uh, so diarize. I think this is a good name for yeah. uh, an upcoming single uh, from Erica Lee. <laughs> but until then, until then, we will be uh, waiting captive here uh, for uh, that new single, Diarize, to come along uh, as uh, Uber <laughs> rolls out its self-driving cars and takes away the road rage outlet there for all of our friends in <laughs> Pittsburgh. Uh, but I want to encourage all of you uh, that are in the vicinity uh, to um, be nice on your way over uh, yes. to uh, this place in Washington, Pennsylvania on March 3rd. But, Eric, I want to thank you so much for joining us here at Pop Song Tech today. And uh, thank you for letting us feature your song without me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. This was, I was really looking forward to this. Thank oh, you so you much. Oh, you got it. We really appreciate you joining us here on the show. And up next for our listeners, we've got Erica Lee's newest single called Without Me. You knock me down You get your kicks turning girls like me Inside out You're every story Big of the life You fool me once, you fool me twice One too many times And now it's one too flat out Knock down good night Cause I don't want you And I don't need you Too many times you broke my heart And now both parts Are wiser to you baby Hope it makes you want Right in front of me I see you all night, all night You really think I would not see You do a great job being a football jack Of rumors that boys like you Never ever really left high school And if it hurts now Imagine how I'll always remind you That I don't want you And I don't need you Too many times you broke my heart And now both parts are wiser to you Baby, hope it makes you want Does it feel to have everything in your wildest dreams without me? 
Again, that is Erica Lee with her uh, latest single called Without Me. And I uh, want to sincerely thank her for joining us for a fun interview uh, here at Pop Song Tech. Uh, but we're moving on to the tech portion now of Pop Song Tech, where we're going to do a deep dive on the HR market, the jobs industry, finding uh, candidates. Uh, if you're a candidate, finding the appropriate job that meets your best interests and your best skills, both hard skills and soft skills. We're talking about Pi Metrics and uh, from. Uh, uh, the uh, data-driven New York in New York City, where Matt Turk, uh, who runs the show, invited us to uh, uh, really uh, take notes, uh, feature them, share them with you. And that's what we're doing here in podcast format. We've got Frida Polly up next, uh, the co-founder and CEO at Pymetrics, talking with us about neuroscience and how that's changing the job industry. And uh, so let's jump into this presentation from Frida. Okay, great. So essentially, Pymetrics is helping match people to careers by is free. That's our tagline. Um, and because you know we have wonderful technology, but sometimes it doesn't work that well, we have a human that's going to be advancing the slides for us. Um, great. So what is the problem that we're trying to solve? So access to candidates and job opportunities is no longer the problem. There's LinkedIn. There is Indeed. There's essentially. Uh, the world of information has arrived to the job market and, and access is now no longer the problem. So what is the problem? The problem is matching. And again, keep in mind, you guys are a very technical audience. It's a potentially you know, easier problem to solve within that audience. This is really think of the broad swath of... So Frida is from uh, uh, MIT. Hard skills, really, really smart hard lady. Involved, and it's really about figuring out a soft skill match uh, to a position. Okay. So how do you do that? The average recruiter gets 250 applicants for every job that they post. And they had basically used two, one of two strategies. Either they completely ignore all the resumes that come their way, and I've had people tell me that. Um, and then they just use employee referrals and elite school recruiting, which is one strategy. Um, or else they use the resumes, and if it's a person doing the scanning, they'll on average scan it for six seconds. So think of how much information and how well your information processing is working if you're looking at a piece of paper for six seconds. Okay? Um, or they use an applicant tracking system to do some sort of very basic keyword search and just rejecting them based on keywords. Okay? So that's really the state of affairs that we're thinking about um, in the sort of entry level, early stage career world right now. And that's to decide who to interview. So the technology of Pymetrics has developed is not to replace interviewing or any kind of human to human interaction. It's really that initial decision making point of who do I even bring out of these 250 people in to interview? Because you're not probably going to interview all of them. Um, and it should surprise nobody that as a result of this essentially lack of matching or very rudimentary matching, um, 30 to 50 percent. 